Welcome to the video tutorials of the book Methods, Evaluation and Research in Education by Muhammad Akhtaruzzaman and today we are going to learn how to calculate descriptive statistics in Microsoft Excel and it contains two parts. Part 1 is Calculation of Descriptive Statistics for Raw Data in MS Excel Part 2 is Calculation of Descriptive Statistics for Group Data in MS Excel with some colorful charts. Let's see. The descriptive statistics for raw data can be better handled by the software SPSS, but it cannot perform several statistical analysis for the group data organized into a frequency distribution. However, the raw data can be transformed into group data by identifying its class and frequency of that class using SPSS. This transformation process is referred to as visual binning in SPSS. In this part of the tutorial, we will discuss first how to convert the raw data into group data using SPSS and then how to calculate descriptive statistics for group data in MS Excel with some colorful charts. Suppose the scores of a test for 50 students are kept in a file, descriptive statistics in SPSS of type .sav, which is in fact the default extension of our SPSS file. Open this SPSS file from the data file. Look at the 50 test scores at the screen. Go to the variable view and see there is only one variable which is score. Okay fine. Now we have to convert this raw data into group data using the process visual pinning. Go to the transform menu, then visual pinning, then take the variable score of the test to the variables pin and click continue. Now select the same variable at the left and change the pinned variable as class and its label as class interval. Observe the max value 68 and mean value 21. Click the Make Cut Points button and specify the first cut point as 19, number of cut points as 10, which is in fact class and width as 5, which is class interval. Now press Apply. Now click Make Labels button just below the Make Cut Points button. The generated class will be less than equal to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to 29, till 60 to 64, and 65 plus. Remove the first one, both value, and label. Now, rename label of the last one as 65 is to 69. Also click reverse scale to see the drop down list from high to low. Now click OK. It will produce an extra column named class in the data view of SPSS data editor. If you want to calculate the frequency of each class and draw pi or bar chart of those class frequencies, go to the analyze menu, then descriptive statistics. Then frequencies. Take the class interval to the right. Select the chart button below and click bar chart or pie chart. Now click continue and click OK. See the frequency of each of the classes in the table class interval at the screen. Also see the colorful bar chart below. Remember, SPSS always prefers to work with the raw data from where the group data are formed. However, using some techniques, descriptive statistics can be calculated on the group data in Microsoft Excel. From the last output of the SPSS, take the classes and its frequencies and put those into three separate columns in the MS Excel editor. In the first column, write lower limit and its values. In the second column, write upper limit and its values. And in the fourth column, write frequency f and its values. 
why we are writing the lower limit and upper limit in two columns in MS Excel editor rather than writing the class interval in a single column. This is the point we have to understand. MS Excel tweets the classes, for example, 65 to 69 as text or string, not a number. For this reason, in this calculation, lower limit and upper limit is used in place of class interval. However, to make the process dynamic, these limits are concatenated using the formula A2 ampersand, then within double quotation, minus, yeah, then ampersand P2 in the column number 3. Now, copy it and select the cell from C3 to C11 and paste, which is copied earlier. Remember, it will be helpful in drawing various types of charts. Now make the column for midpoint X, Fx, X minus M, X minus M whole square, and F into X minus M whole square. Look at the screen. First, we have to compute the midpoint X in E2, Fx, in F2, X minus M, in G2, X minus M whole square, in H2, and F into X minus M whole square, in I2, by setting the appropriate formula. Let's see the formula for E2 to I2 at the same row. The formula for E2 is A2 plus P2 divided by 2. For F2, it is D2 multiplied by E2. Press enter. For G2, it is E2 minus 44.6, where 44.6 is the mean value. Now, for H2, it is G2 multiplied by G2. And finally, for I2, it is D2 multiplied by H2. Now, copy E2 to I2 at the same row. Now select the cell from E3 to E11, F3 to F11, G3 to G11, H3 to H11, and I3 to I11 together, and paste, which was copied earlier. However, the formula for mean for cell F13 in the function box is sum F2 is to F11 divided by sum D2 is to D11. Press enter. Now, the formula for standard deviation of cell I13 in the function box is sum I2 is to I11. I2 is to I11 divided by sum D2 is to D11. Now, square root the entire sum. Press enter. For drawing column, bar or pie chart, the class interval and frequency column may be used. Select both the columns from C2 to C11 and D2 to D11 together and then click insert menu to select the chart you want to draw. However, you can use different chart styles and layouts to make it more colorful. Thank you for staying with us. It's Yastani saying you goodbye.